grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A warm welcome to each and every one of you as we gather in this online community of faith. This is the Sunday on the church calendar when churches all over the world celebrate worldwide communion. Yet this year, all over the world, things certainly look different. So different denominations and churches have made different decisions about how to modify the communion liturgy to keep everyone healthy and safe. In the United Church of Canada, we've, we've had a big conversation about whether or not we can celebrate communion in a recorded worship service where no one is present except for the presider. So the general wisdom right now is that for communion to truly be a sacrament, we need to share the same loaf and cup at the same time. And that's just not possible in the format that we're using at Elderton United Church. But I don't want this important day to pass us by. So today we'll be recognizing this celebration with an agape meal. So for those of you who have not heard of an agape meal before, I guess the easiest way to describe it is that it's similar to communion, but less formal. It's called an agape meal because agape is one of the New Testament words for love, selfless love. And meals, obviously, were very important in Jesus' life, the Last Supper being one of the most notable, of course. But throughout Jesus' ministry, he shared many meals with friends, and with outcasts as a way to give us glimpses of the kingdom of God and to describe the hospitable, inclusive love of God made known to us in Christ Jesus. I'm using the Agape Meal Order of Service that's found in the United Church of Canada Book of Services. So, so I hope you find this meaningful today. On this day of worldwide communion, Congregations around the world will be finding many new ways to celebrate the love and hospitality of God. So let us now pray, sing, bless, and affirm our intention to follow the way of Jesus. As we light this candle, we recognize God's call in our lives. God's Spirit calls to our spirits, calling us by name, calling us to grow in faith, calling us to be made new. May the Spirit of God that is in each of you shine for all to see. Our opening hymn is found in Voices United. It's 312, Praise with Joy, the World's Creator. with joy the world's creator God of justice love and peace source and end of human knowledge God whose grace shall never cease celebrate the maker's glory how to rescue and release Praise to Christ who feeds the hungry, frees the captive, finds the lost. 
past heals the sick, upsets religion, fearless both of fate and past. Celebrate Christ's constant presence, friend and stranger, guest and host. Praise the Spirit sent among us, liberating truth from pride, forging bonds where race or gender, age or nation dare divide. Celebrate the Spirit's treasure, foolishness none dare deride. Praise the Maker, Christ and Spirit, one God in community, calling Christians to embody oneness and Please pray with me. O living God of past and future, we thank you for this present moment. Fill us with your joy and empower us with your Holy Spirit that our strength may be renewed to sing a new song of your glory in a world which longs for your justice and peace. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, in whom we become your new creation. Amen. Well, the reading today is one of the readings for the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. And I'm delighted to tell you that our reader is Megan Henderson, and she's reading the Ten Commandments from Ralph Milton's Family Story Bible. God told Moses ten important things to remember. We call them the Ten Commandments. I am your God. I brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Don't pretend there are any other gods. I am the only one. Don't make pictures of statues of anything else that you think might look like me. Don't bow down to them or pray to them. Be careful how you use my name. When you speak my name, you must mean what you are saying. Remember the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week. Work on the other six days. Rest on the seventh day and make it a special day. Treat your mother and father with respect. Be good to them. Don't kill anyone. Be faithful to the one you marry. Don't steal. Don't tell lies about anyone. Don't wish you had things that belonged to other people. The people were afraid when they saw all the smoke and heard God's voice, but they said thank you to God. They were glad to know how to live in God's way. Thank you so much for reading today, Megan. It's good to hear your voice. Well, rules are important, and many of us agree on that. And lately, we've been using some particular rules more often than we might have anticipate, like rules like wash your hands, wear a mask, keep a social distance. So how do those rules sound to you today? Reasonable? Unreasonable? In some places in North America, they are contentious rules. They're divisive. But I believe it depends on the context within which you hear them. When those rules are made within the context of particular relationships, and for us the main relationships are are loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves, Well, these words become less a burden and more acts of loving kindness, where we want to do what we can for the common good, with concern for the health and safety of the most vulnerable people in our communities. 
So what if we applied that same logic to the Ten Commandments? Because that's how I'd like us to listen to the words of the Ten Commandments today. They are issued within the context of these same significant relationships, the relationships of loving God and loving our neighbors. And once these commandments are heard in this loving, relational way, they become less a list of imperious, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. And, and they become more descriptive, as if God is saying, my dear people, when you humbly walk with me in justice and love, you shall not murder or lie or steal. The Ten Commandments draw a hopeful vision of life in community. Another theologian turned to poetry to reflect on the Ten Commandments as ten statements of hope and promise. He asked himself, what if it means one day you will? So listen to his version of the Ten Commandments. One day you will remember God is love. One day you will remember there is only one loving God. One day you will only say God's name with love. One day you will always remember to rest and pray to God. One day, you, parents and children, will love and care for one another. One day, you will respect all living things. One day, you will keep your promises to one another. One day, you will respect what belongs to another. One day, you will tell the truth about others. One day, you will be content with the good things of your own life. And may that day begin today. May it begin with us, and may it ever be so. So now is the time for the agape meal. Agape is such a great word. As I mentioned before, it's one of the New Testament words for love, referring to a kind of love that's not concerned with the self, but rather with the greatest good of another. Agape love isn't an emotion, but a choice to serve, without the expectation of anything in return. And of course, Jesus is the one who showed us what agape love means, both in word and deed. And just like the sacrament of communion, the, the origins of the agape meal are found in the early church. And one of the main differences now is that it can be as much of a meal as you like, at one agape meal I attended, the table overflowed with food, just like God's overflowing love for us. At another agape meal I participated in, the leaders offered us grapes and rice crackers. And you can see here, today I have apples and bread and cranberry juice. So, my invitation to you now, if you'd like to share this agape meal, is to pause the video and get something to eat and drink. And when you return, let's eat and drink together. We begin with grace, with a word of blessing. Let us pray. 
Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this food to eat and this community to enjoy. Bless the food for our use. Bless us in your service that we may help those who are in need. For Jesus' sake, amen. Now let's eat and drink with gratitude to God. As we remember God's generous hospitality, let us give some thought now to, to what your week ahead or the next couple of weeks ahead are like for you. And I invite you to make a personal commitment to something intentional that you could offer to serve your community near or far. It could be a donation to the food bank. It could be a daily prayer of intercession. It could be offering your assistance in a way that you feel called to reach out and serve. And now hold that idea in your hearts and minds as we pray together. Creator God, we dedicate to you our intentions to follow the path of Jesus a path of agape love and service. Some of our intentions are fairly ordinary, sharing food, time, money, prayer, sharing our talents and gifts. But in bringing them to you, we offer ourselves. And so we pray that you receive our offering. May the ordinary things offered in agape love become extraordinary as they do your work in this place and this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let's sing together once again. The hymn of response is When We Are Living, and it's in Voices United, number 581. Whether we 
two announcements this morning before we end our worship service. As you might have read in the newspaper this past week, on Monday morning, Wesley United Church um, had a terrible fire. It was the first of three church fires in Saugeen First Nation. The Western Ontario Waterways Regional Council is collecting financial donations in support of Wesley United Church. That's the regional council just next door to us. They share the same office as our regional council, the Antler River Watershed. If you can help out with prayers or financial support, it would be so gratefully received. And there's more information at the end of this worship service. The second announcement is that I'm collecting Thanksgiving selfies for the worship video next week, next Thanksgiving Sunday. So this is an invitation to you to send me your photo or your family's photo. And when I receive these photographs, I'm going to be assembling them into a video montage for the Thanksgiving worship video. And your photo could be as simple as a quick selfie, or your photo could be a posed picture of you and your family at supper, or you and your family holding a happy Thanksgiving sign. You can, you can use your imagination. I know that folks have told me how much they enjoy hearing different people's voices reading the scriptures every week. And so I just thought that we would enjoy seeing each other's faces because we haven't seen one another for a very long time. So if you can email those photos to me or text them to me by Wednesday, October 7th at noon, I'd be very grateful. Before we go today, I would just like to offer this blessing. May the light of Christ lead you. The wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you and the love of our Creator enfold you. Go in peace, go in love, go in agape love. Justice, walk with mercy and with God's 